Hi there, and welcome to My Week. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Christy McDonald. Change is certainly the buzzword in 2015 in Detroit and around the state. And perhaps one of the biggest changes is in Wayne County, where Warren Evans has taken over the reins of leadership. County Executive Evans is here. He's ready to take our questions about the county's finances and the future. Plus, the Detroit Public School District gets its fourth emergency manager. Can the school system's financial problems ever get fixed? Also, what will the governor talk about in his State of the State address next week? And the North American International Auto Show is revved up and ready for the crowds. That is all coming up for you on my week. But we do start in Wayne County. He's been the county sheriff and the Detroit police chief. Now Warren Evans is taking on a new challenge, Wayne County Executive. Evans has already cut salaries, reduced staff in an effort to fix the county's finances. But what else does he have planned? Joining us now is Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. Welcome. And of course, we have our My Week contributors, Nolan Finn of the Detroit News and Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. Gentlemen, it's good to see you and welcome to my week, Warren. Good morning and thank you. All right, so um, let's start about the things that you, you know about already, the accumulated deficit, the pension fund problems, the jail project. What I want to ask you first, though, is what surprises have you found in this first two weeks on the job? Probably none. <laughs> um, my anticipation was that things were worse than, you know, had been pronounced earlier, and I think we're finding that to be true. Um, we're still trying to get r to the very bottom of the hole just to know uh, where we are. Uh, I think it's fundamentally important both for Wayne County to change uh, and for us to be transparent that we've got to be real clear about how deep the hole is when we get to the bottom of it. Uh, and we've got to let all the stakeholders see that. Uh, and going forward, I think the goal has got to be agree how deep the hole is and then we can discuss, argue, do whatever we need to do to try to find the solutions. But I think to be arguing about the depth of the hole um, is kind of silly at this point. We've got to be clear about that. So when do you think that you're going to find out how deep the hole is in terms of timing? And who do you have to agree with on that? Well, I, I, I think in about uh, 10 days, I should have uh, uh, everything I need to know. Uh, Bob Dada is doing a tremendous job uh, of helping us determine how deep the hole, but also to help do the design work for our attempts to get out of it. Yeah, none of them are going to be pretty, um, but obviously you need a really skilled person to be able to, uh, based on this set of facts, here are the possibilities, now let's work through them. And I think the transition team, uh, Dado and others, have been very comfortable with the fact that I've not asked them to take anything off the table. Um, there are no hidden issues, well we can't go there, no, uh, it, it's wide open. You tell me how bad it is, We'll look at the options, uh, and then we'll do what we have to do. Can you get out of this hole without the state's help? I, I know we're all familiar with what did the process Detroit went through, first mm -hmm. emergency management, then bankruptcy. Is that the path Wayne County is on? I don't think so. I, I, we'll never get out of it without the state's help. Uh, but, but in what form? Well, it, it may not even be a consent agreement. The help may be technical. The help may be uh, in many respects. Um, uh, watching our path and saying, if you stay on that path, we'll probably be all right with you guys. So th that's still to be determined, but I don't see necessarily at this point that we're looking at imminent bankruptcy. Uh, we certainly have a solvency issue. There's no question about it, cash flow problems. Uh, but I'm still optimistic that we might be able to do it, but we'll never be able to do it all by ourselves. It's got to be a team issue. Uh, the state's been very, very helpful. You know, I've run a number of names of uh, appointees up that ladder just to get feedback. Uh, it's been great that in many of those instances they had the same good feelings about people that I had that always works uh, in relationships and negotiations and obviously you want very very qualified people uh, to try to get us out of this mess and it is a mess. I mean there's no minimizing. I know enough now to know that the hole's deep enough to be scary. I just don't know where the bottom is. You know the one side of, of the equation that we don't talk much about is the revenue side mm -hmm. and the, the inability of county governments to really raise more revenue uh, than they have. You know, the state uh, over the last 10 or 15 years has really changed the way that state government can get uh, money from, from citizens for government. Counties have not been dealt in uh, on those changes. Is that something uh, that you feel like the governor ought to be looking at? Uh, absolutely, but I mean, I think there has to be a return for the state too, and I think what historically happens is we ask the big we ask for things without finding ways to streamline our process and give value to the ask right. uh, and that's what I'm trying to do 
Um, we don't know uh, I exactly um, where we're going to wind up, but we do know uh, that revenue sharing is going to be a problem and there may be a better formula for revenue sharing statewide. I'm not talking about because it's good Just for Wayne County. Sure. I mean, you've got to find some win-wins that say this is good for others too and this may not hurt the state and we may be able to do this if it's revenue sharing, if it's uh, um, uh, our property taxes. I mean, obviously, uh, if property taxes double in Wayne County next year, we don't get the double. You know, we get the head lead right. Right. portion of that. Right. Uh, so it would take us 15 or 20 years to get back to where we were before. So and I think uh, that's, that's worth discussion. So Warren, I want to go back just a minute. You talked about having a solvency issue and a cash flow issue. Are you anywhere near not being able to pay your bills or make payroll? No, we're not. But next year and the year after, when the hole gets deeper because we've borrowed against the future for so long, the structural deficit next year and the year after uh, is going to be really significant. And I can't guarantee that there won't be problems then if we don't create a preemptive strike now. Do, I, I want to I ask real quick, when you talk about financing counties, do you look to your neighbors on the other side and you say, well, look at Oakland County and say that they've had some success. Mm -hmm. um, do you take a page from Brooks Patterson's playbook at all? I think we take a page from everybody's playbook that makes sense. And I think my relationships over the last 15 years help us in that direction. My relationship with Mike Doug and my relationship with Mark Hackle and my relationship with L. Brooks Patterson have been good for many, many years. I mean, in, uh, this is my third elective office countywide, and I've had relationships with them. Uh, I've taken what makes sense, and quite often uh, many of them have taken from me, um, you know, in previous life. So uh, I think they all have expertise. I think they're all there for a reason. I think they've all done some very, very good things, and I think there are things I can learn from all of them, and hopefully at some point there'll be some things they can learn from me, but that'll wait to be seen. Have they given you some unsolicited advice? In these, Absolutely. Uh... I mean, there's no way in the world Al Brooks Pratt is not going to give you unsolicited advice. <laughs> I mean, they're joking. With. But um, solicited or unsolicited, I actually go and ask. You know, I have ideas about uh, the way I think things should work, but I have sense enough to know that there are other viewpoints and vantage points that aren't necessarily mine that would be helpful in that decision making, and I'm trying my best to do that. How much of the uh, county's problems are driven by the, the, the pension uh, liabilities, the long term? sort of unqualified, really, uh, liabilities. And unfunded liabilities. And unfunded. <coughs> a lot of it. Uh, and so what do you do about that? I mean, is well, That's part of the restructuring plan, if you will, uh, once we know how deep the hole is. I mean, obviously, there's not just one hole when you look at it that the way. This is the pension side and the general fund side and others. But I still have to get kind of a cumulative understanding of what the depths are everywhere for us to try to figure out how to do that. We lost, a, the county lost a... Uh, pension case just recently to the tune of another $32 million. Right. It's getting tacked on there somewhere. And, and your hole in terms of underfunding seems to be larger than Detroit's was when it, when, when it got in trouble. And I don't think there's going to be a grand bargain for Wayne County. Probably there's not going to be foundation help and state help in terms of a cash bailout. How, other than bankruptcy, do you restructure pension liabilities? Well, I mean, there's refinancing possibilities. There are possibilities of, uh, you know, we still have some milligeability um, as much as you hate to talk about it, everything's got to be on the table. Well, can you do anything with your unions to reno renegotiate that debt, or is that off the table, too? I don't think anything's off the table. I think we have a credibility problem with our unions um, from the previous administration, quite frankly. And what I've tried to demonstrate early on in this administration is nobody goes bloodless. We're all going to bleed. Uh, mm -hmm. There's going to be some bleeding here. You know, I, I brought in a new team of people and automatically paid them 5% less than the people that they replaced. Is that going to get us out of the deficit? We all know it isn't. But I think it sends a message that says, you know, we're willing to start at the top um, with trying to come up with creative ways to do this. Uh, we've got, we're going to have to get to a number uh, at some point, but how we get to that number how onerous it is on county employees, how onerous it is on tax players is still worth discussion. And you know, we want to make it as equitable uh, as we can, but I think it's got to be real clear that we've got to do it. There's no kicking the can down the road any farther. And so 
And I, I think it's, it's got to be difficult, too, once you get to the bottom of that hole when you have to start prioritizing what is going to be cut and how because you have a sheriff and you have a county prosecutor that could always use more money in their budgets. And, the, and they're going to need that, but that doesn't mean that has to be general fund dollars and it doesn't mean it has to be structured automatically. Uh, and so I think there's grant funding. I mean, one thing the county has never done because of the fiefdoms and the territorial nature is other electeds getting together and applying for grants together. I mean, when you apply for them together, the idea of the person funding the grant is, well, everybody must be on board. And if everybody's on board, there's more of a likelihood that this will work than it would have before. I'm prepared to team with those who are going to manage the provision of services in a better way, and the prosecutor is clearly one of those people. I think we bring in revenue from grants, and, and quite frankly, the county, we're in the process of reprioritizing what we can do with our general fund dollars. There may be some services we provide that we're going to have to pull back on, and that money is going to have to be allocated to those departments that are the most critical. I mean, I don't have that finished at this point, but I really mean it when I say everything uh, is on the table. We need all the help we can get, um, but, but can we're going to do it intelligently ourselves. Can you do this if Kim Worthy and ben Benny Napoleon continue to spend <clears throat> without regard to your budget and your spending plan? But that's you, that's you saying that, Nolan. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure that that's true in terms mm -hmm. of just willy-nilly spending. There is some, uh, and and well, they have to live within the budgets they've been given by the county. But having been a county sheriff who lived mm -hmm. through a bunch of budgets, I understand if the budget is nowhere based in reality, mm -hmm. then you can't live within the budget. So that's your commitment to them, to give them a realistic budget? A realistic budget and try to provide the resources for that bus budget and understanding if they don't live within that budget, I understand how constructive coercion works uh, <laughs> and we have to work <laughs> at holding that together. I mean. I mean, that's just simply it. Now, I'm not saying that's the issue with either of those electeds at this point, but obviously, if I give you the resources to get the job done, I have a responsibility to make sure those resources are being used appropriately so the county gets the services that and it needs. What about the jail, uh, speaking of uh, public safety? I mean, that's still sitting there, uh, partially built uh, with a big dollar, dollar sign price tag on it, uh, but, but we don't have a solution yet. Uh, yeah, we don't, and the, and the more we seek a solution, I have uh, uh, retired Chief Judge Rick Kaufman in charge of the jail project, uh, and he has been working on it for months. Uh, it is, at least in my opinion, probably the worst decision that I know Wayne County has made mm. in the 35 or 40 years Wh that which, I've been associated with. Which decision? With. To build the, the jail? The decision where it was? to build it without adequate information to determine what the cost would be long term, what the operating expenses would be for the facility. I mean, we still didn't know that in the middle of this. How do you begin to build something? sell bonds, borrow money, and you don't know what the savings is going to be at the end or if there's a savings at the end, right. and those arguments are still going on now. What I do know is I don't have any offers for that piece of property that come anywhere close to the $130 million that sunk in it. Yeah, right. uh, and so uh, rehabbing the old jails will be tremendous because they've been neglected in terms of maintenance for so long. So there's just no easy answer. But what I don't want to happen is that we wind up with less jail beds than we had before after we expend more money mm -hmm. and hurt the criminal justice system in Wayne County, which already needs help. Right. And so it's a tremendous problem, but I, I, I am confident that the team we have will fix it if anybody can. All right. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing what's going to happen the next couple of days and talking about getting to the bottom of that hole. And we look forward to uh, talking with you as the time goes on. Thanks for having me.